Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are once again tackling the text tool. We're talking about alignment and positioning today, which is very important, so let's get right to it. We're gonna go into the text tool here, and we're gonna zoom in, and we're gonna check out this page attached text block, which I've already created, and I'm gonna look at the frame attributes. So we've already talked about the top portion of this, which is uh, where the, the text block gets attached to. Uh, we're going to talk about the rest of this, the alignment and positioning. Now, the alignment is really related to the horizontal and vertical pull-down menus here. We have three options for each, left, center, and right for horizontal, and top, center, and bottom for vertical. So very simply, we can just change one of these uh, choices here. If we want to put this text block in the center, we can just do that, and the whole text block will go to the center. We can also change the vertical. If we want to go to the bottom, we could do bottom, and you'll see that it will go all the way to the bottom. Now, we can also do this from the menu. There is an alignment section here, and you can see that uh, this is chosen as center bottom uh, currently, so we can change this and go to center here. And you'll also see that there are uh, shortcuts for this. So shift command left bracket, single quote, right bracket, backward slash equals and minus for all of these options here. I'm gonna talk about the position from uh, page edge and page margin in a second. Uh, but uh, again, you can just use these, um, uh, these uh, shortcuts. So shift command left bracket and backward slash should get me back to the upper left hand corner. Now, without a text block selected, those alignment positions are still available. And uh, when you start entering a text block, uh, it's going to take on the alignment positions that were checked when you created that text block, so left and top. Um, we can always uh, change that from the outset. So again, this you have to have nothing selected. If you were to select an alignment here with something selected, it would move that element. But uh, without anything selected, I could do center top and then start a new text block. And it would uh, align that to the center. If we looked at this now, it will say uh, horizontal aligned to the center. Now, obviously, these text blocks are not you know, totally center and totally top. This one is sort of in the middle of the page here. This has to do with the next portion of this, which is the positioning. So you have position offsets, and uh, we have a horizontal and vertical, and these can be negative. So negative uh, horizontal offsets go left, positive go right, negative vertical offsets go lower, positive go, goes upwards. And these offsets are relative to the alignment point, so the alignment point of center top, right? Uh, when these numbers are zero, uh, what it will do is it will align that to the, the center top of where this is uh, attached to. In this case, it's attached to the page margin, which I'm going to talk about very soon. Uh, but again, the uh, position is zero offset from the center, zero offset from the top. And of course, we can change these offsets as much as we need to. And obviously, when you move things around in the score, um, it will also change those offsets for you. Uh, so you can see what that is exactly. One other thing to notice is that uh, with these text blocks, let me just move this one over to the right, you can see that the, uh, the handles are different. So in this left attached, in this left aligned text block, the handle's on the upper left, this is on the uh, upper center, this is on the upper right. Um, and even when you start you know, adding new information, you can see that the text is continuing off to the left, not the right. Uh, this is this will happen when you have a right aligned text block. The center text block will stay centered no matter what. All right, so these alignment positions are are kind of very important uh, relative to how this how these text blocks are sort of justified. Although it's not complete justification because when you go to a second line, you can actually see this is left justified. Um, so technically this text block is center aligned but left justified. I'm going to talk about justification more in the next video uh, when we start talking about frames because they're a little bit uh, intimately related. But anyway, just noticing where that handle is will tell you exactly how these text blocks are aligned. And actually if we go to the, let's go to a bottom position here. Uh, and check it out over here. You can see that the handle now gets put all the way uh, on the bottom of the frame there. So that's sort of important to, to see as well. 
So let's talk about that next thing in the frame attributes window. We have the position from, and we have two options here from the page margin or the page edge. This is basically going to tell the text block at which point these alignment positions are going to be taken from. So when it's uh, assigned to the page margin, you have zero offsets to the left top header. Um, you'll notice that it's not exactly on the edge of the page, right? But if we look at the uh, page margins in the page layout tool, you can kind of see that it's nestled perfectly in that uh, corner there uh, between the top page margin and the bottom page margin. The thing about these text blocks attached to page margins is that they will actually move when you move the page margin, right? So now it just got a little bit closer to the edge of the page. That's because it's obviously pinned to the page margin. Most of the time you do want to do this because when you start changing your page margins, you kind of want these things to change with it, right? You don't want that, uh, that title to be kind of offset to the left um, so it's not lining up with the right edge of the system here. So most of the time attaching it or yeah, attaching it to the page margin is the way to go. But we can always attach these text blocks to the page edge instead. And if we choose page edge with a zero zero offset here, it's going to put it all the way up in the very tippy corner of the page here. Um, so you can see that uh, that's exactly what happens. You'll see that when I move the margins, these uh, text blocks will not uh, move, right? The ones that are attached to the margins will always move. So uh, just, uh, you know, just know what you're doing here. Again, most of the time you're better off uh, attaching to a page margin, but there are cases where it can be handy to attach it to the page edge instead. Now, obviously with these text blocks, it's easy enough to just drag them around, right? Like I could take this text block and drag it all the way over to the right. But this is never really a good idea because now if we look at the frame attributes here, what you'll see is a horizontal offset of, of 6.25, which is a very large offset for these text blocks. And it's still positioned against the left edge of the page margin, right? So this is kind of, you can do this, but uh, you know, it's gonna be weird because now if you move the left page margin, it's going to move that te text block, which doesn't make any sense because it should be aligned with the right margin. But if you move the right margin, this text block stays put. So uh, it's not always a good idea to drag these text blocks uh, around that far. And furthermore, these positions, these offset positions here, are scalable. So if you needed to do something where you needed to change the size of the page, just do that here, resize page to 150 for page one, uh, what you're gonna see is that page attached text block moved all the way over here, way off the page, so now it actually disappeared. Um, again, the, the offset here is still 6.25, but it's six point, it's 150% of 6.25 from the left page margin, which is uh, 10 something, nine point something, away from the page margin, which puts it all the way over here. So this is why you would never want to um, uh, you know, drag, or this is another reason why you'd never want to literally drag a left um, uh, aligned position all the way to the right. So if we just put that on, on the right and a zero offset, you'll see that come back to the page. Obviously, you know, scaling a zero offset, it doesn't matter what the scaling is, it's always gonna be zero, right? So again, just a, a reason to be careful about making sure your alignment positions are really as close to where you really want them to be, right? So if you need a text block on the right, make sure that it's aligned right. If you need it on the left, make sure it's aligned left and don't just drag things around. So this is actually another reason why for my uh, for my money, the best thing to do with your page format for score and your parts is to leave the the scale page to 100% for both of them. I know that you can change the size of the music on the parts by scaling the page, and that will work. But again, it will also scale this not only the size of the text themselves, but it will scale these positions. And sometimes these, you know, you can have these, uh, you know, attached to the right edge, but maybe offset a little bit. So you know, if the pages are just a little bit scaled differently, this offset is going to be different as well. Again, these values will scale with the page percentage. So just be careful. Um, uh, just be careful when you're dealing with that. Let's talk about the next option here, position from edge of frame. What in the world is that? Well, leave this checked. This is an option that predates version 3.7, which is like the mid 90s. <laughs> um, and there's really no reason to have this unchecked. There is still some functionality related to, uh, I think it's line spacing. 
but it's kind of a very subtle thing and really there's never any reason to to uncheck that unless you're working in a finale file that's uh, you know a finale version that's older than 3.7 so and then let's look at the the bottom section here right page alignment and positioning now this is going to be relevant to facing pages so the type of text block that's mostly going to you're going to find on a facing page is probably going to be a page number and if we look at my page numbers in this file you'll see that my page three number is over here and my page four number is over here these are actually the same exact text block it's not like i created two text blocks here um, but uh, this uh, uh, text block is using a right page alignment and positioning and all you have to do to invoke this is just check that option and basically what this does is it allows the text block to have different positions uh, in the horizontal or different alignment in the horizontal and different positions in both the horizontal and vertical um, on the right page than it does on the left page so when this is checked these options here relate to the left page um, but these options here relate to the right page. And remember that um, odd pages are uh, right pages and even pages are left pages. So page one is right, two is left, three is right, four is uh, left, etc. And what it's doing is it's, it's only allowing you to change the horizontal alignment. It's not allowing you to change the vertical alignment, but you can change both the horizontal and vertical offset position. And in fact, for some reason, you can see that I have these set up slightly different where the vertical um, is 0.15 and 0.167 uh, here. So we can just make a quick change there uh, to get those in alignment. And it's probably too subtle to even notice, but <laughs> now those are uh, perfectly aligned. Now you can actually, if you really wanted to, you can set this to center for the right pages and you'll get some weird thing. Now the page number is in the middle of the other text block here. Um, so there are options. You could even, I, I guess feasibly, if you wanted them both on the left, but to have different offsets, maybe a different um, vertical offset, you could do that as well. I guess you can get a little creative with this if you really wanted to. But basically, it's going to give you a different horizontal alignment for the right page than the left page and potentially different positionings for the right and left page. So let's start talking about uh, linked parts a little bit. Now, uh, the one thing about text blocks is that the text blocks will always appear on every single linked part by default. So you can see that my text, my uh, title uh, text block is here. My All these other text blocks are here. Um, just like in the score, they're the exact same thing. They're in the exact same position. Uh, this is a score part name insert over here. So that's why it says flute one here, but flute two, flute or oboe and everything. So. So these text blocks will appear everywhere, basically. Um, the one thing to be aware of is that the alignment points between these text blocks cannot be different uh, between the score and the part. So if this is left top aligned, this is going to be left top aligned um, for the score and for all the parts. What can be different, if you want, is the positioning. And actually, you can just simply drag the positioning. I'm using shift here to constrain the dragging. Remember, shift will constrain dragging either up or down or left or right. And that will give me a unique position for the flute one mark here. And you'll see that it turns orange, which means that the positioning is completely unlinked from everything else. So in the score, it's in its original position. In the uh, flute two, it's in its original position, oboe, etc. It's just this flute one that's a little bit higher now. And you'll actually see this in the frame attributes, the uh, position gets changed here uh, just for this particular text block in this part. I believe you can actually um, change it here as well. And again, it will only change it um, on the, uh, the part that you're changing it to. So only the position can really be unlinked from the score. The alignment cannot. Uh, and I think the other uh, information here really can't either. You can't change the position from, um, you can't change the, whether or not it's a right page alignment situation. The only thing that you can uh, independently change is the vertical and horizontal offsets. Uh, now when we unlink something, we can always relink it. If you right click, you can go relink to score and there's a little shortcut there, which is not so short. And uh, we could do that. We could also um, hide it, incidentally. If you choose the, the hide, it will also unlink it so it's not showing uh, just on this part. You'll see that it shows on flute two, but not on flute one. That's also an unlinked property. And again, just to relink it. We can, in the part, uh, go ahead and hold down Command and drag, and you'll notice that it's not turning orange. It's staying black. What this is doing is it's actually changing the master position here. So if we even go into the score, you'll see that the whole thing in the score uh, has moved as well. 
And then one other thing I wanted to point out, you know, again with these text blocks, if you have a text block in the, the finale file, it appears on all the parts and all the scores. There is no way to have a text block that's only appearing on a particular part, which sometimes is a problem because if this flute player doubles on clarinet, clarinet in B, oh, it's not letting me do the inserts. I think it has to do with my, um, my video uh, software here. Uh, clarinet and B flat, oops, you'll see that uh, this clarinet and B flat will appear on the score. It will appear uh, in all of the other parts, which is not what we want. We only want this to appear in the flute one part. So there's a, a couple different ways to deal with this. Uh, this is kind of common. Um, I think the best way is really the, the drag it off the page method. So go to the score where it's not, where when dragging it, you're not gonna unlink it. Or I suppose you could do this in with command in the part anyway, but just drag it up above the page. Now this text block um, will never print. Uh, you can see that it's there, but now in every single part, uh, it's above the page, so it won't print. And then in the part where you need it, just grab it if you can and drag it into place. So now we only have this text block appearing uh, in the flute one part, all the other parts, it's still dragged above the page and it will never print. Uh, but you can see that you have your, your doubled instrument there. The other possible way to do this, let me just undo some of this, is to actually hide it in the score so that it's not printing. And again, this will just mean that uh, it's not gonna print and you'll see that it's hidden everywhere. And then just in the flute one part, choose to show it. And it'll turn orange, but it will turn solid orange, which means that it's showing and everywhere else it's still hidden. So this is another way to, to deal with, um, you know, showing an individual text block only on a single part. Let me just go back to the score real quick. And very briefly, I'm gonna talk about the measure attached text block. Um, uh, let's go into the frame attributes. When you have a measure attached text block, we do not get the alignment options that we do with a page attached text block. We only get the positioning options. So the only thing we could really change here is the horizontal and vertical offsets. And the reference point for these offsets, if we set these to zero, you'll see is going to be the top left corner of the measure. And you can see that that, uh, that handle is now in the top left corner, which puts the whole text block you know, in the measure, which may not be ideal. Um, of course, it's easy enough to just drag these text blocks to where you need them. So there's hardly any reason to ever go into that frame attributes. I suppose the best reason to do that is if you have another one here, um, you could find out what the vertical offset is, okay, 0.4722. And then when you create a new one, you can set that vertical offset. Oops, well, this is a page attached. You can set that vertical offset uh, to the same exact number. So that may be the value of doing it with the numbers as opposed to you know trying to eyeball it into alignment. All right, so I think that covers it. That's the alignment and positioning options for text blocks. There's a lot to it. It's, it's kind of interrelated with a lot of different things, including scaling and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of good stuff here to know about uh, the, the text tool. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to start talking about the frame itself. Uh, there's something uh, called an unbounded versus a bounded frame. I'm going to talk about the bounded frames a little bit more. Up until now, we've only been dealing with unbounded frames. And um, yeah, and we'll go from there. I'm also going to talk about justification because the justification is also uh, relevant to uh, the frames themselves. So uh, we're going to talk about justification in the next video as well. All right, so there you go. There is uh, alignment and positioning in tackling the text tool. My name is Jason. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you soon on the next video.